Hello everybody and welcome back to another fantastic episode of Martin Gore's Movie Moment. Today I will be discussing why Ariel is the worst Disney princess of all time. Now I have just had the misfortune of re-watching The Little Mermaid, which I took extensive notes on, and there are a lot of problems that Ariel has. There's a lot of problems with the movie overall, but I'm really going to fixate on one particular moment. The time when Ariel makes the deal with Ursula to become human. Now let's get some background on this, okay? Ariel is a 16-year-old youngest daughter of the King of the Ocean, okay? She has six older siblings, okay? She falls in love with Prince Eric after saving him from an exploding ship, and it was apparently love at first sight, okay? So right off the bat, we have a 16-year-old experiencing her first crush. After previously establishing her unhealthy obsession with the human world, okay? She has a hoarder-like personality trait where she collects literal garbage and thinks it as treasures. She looks at a literal fork and doesn't know what it is. In the movie they call this thing a dinglehopper. When we see her father carrying a trident, a three-pronged fork. What's interesting about this fork is the first time we see it, it has four prongs. The next shot, it has three prongs. It is so, they, they were just, here's a mini trident. You couldn't guess that, Dinglehopper. Good job, Siegel. Eventually, she arrives at the conclusion that the only way that she will be able to be with her one true love is to go to the Sea Witch Ursula for help. Okay, right off the bat, she, she knew, she knew Right off the bat, this bitch should not be trusted. When those flotsam and jotsam, whatever the fuck, eels show up, and we're like, you should go to the Sea Witch, and Ariel was like straight up, no, I'm not going to the Sea Witch. She knew that Ursula couldn't be trusted, but she went anyway, because love conquers all, or some bullshit. Anyway, she goes to the house of Ursula, and what does she find just inside the doorway? The withered, like, soul vessel remains of all the previous victims of Ursula. Now, I know what you're going to say. She didn't know that's what these things were. She did, eventually. In the song Ursula sings, she literally shows mer people's spirits being transformed into those fucked up little things outside of her fucking door, okay? Ariel witnesses this firsthand. She knows that's what they are, yet she signs the contract anyway. No, that's stupid. My favorite, like, okay, when she first swims in, right, she is attacked by these creepy things. No, these creepy things are warning her, get the fuck out, or else you'll end up looking like us. Like, Christ, if that, like, if you saw that, you'd run. Like, what? Look at, like, that's, that right there, that imagery of what these things actually represented was like, whoa, this is fucked up. Yet Ariel's like, I'm going to sign the contract anyway. Okay, so right there, she's an idiot that she signs the contract anyway. I mean, she is a first-hand witness to the song, Poor Unfortunate Soul. Okay? She sees everything that we see in that scene, and she signs the contract anyway. Because apparently love is blind or some, I don't know, it's some non sequitur about love that makes this scene okay or something like that. She gives away her voice to become a human for 30 days, okay? I will give the movie credit where credit is due in the idea that, like, like this, this occurred to me as I was watching the movie. For the majority of Ariel's interactions with Prince Eric in those three days, she can't speak. Yeah, he falls in love with her anyway. So if you kind of look at it from that perspective, like, you don't need the ability to speak to have somebody, like, if you're, if you're mute and you literally cannot speak, that doesn't mean you can't find love. So if you look at it from that perspective, that's a nice sentiment. You know, any, everyone can find love, okay? That's, that's, what, that's what I'm trying to get at there. Or you could look at it this way, which is the way that I have been looking at it, uh, you don't need a voice to win a man. Basically, he doesn't care what the fuck comes out of your mouth. He just cares what you look like. And Ursula straight up says this. You'll have your looks, your pretty face, 
and don't underestimate the power of body language are literal lines that come out of her good job good image building messages coming out of Disney in this fucking song Jesus Christ what does that tell the little girls who went to see this movie it doesn't matter who you are as a person what matters is what you look like okay that's a horrible message the way I described it earlier anyone can find love even if you cannot speak you know even if you can't really tell verbally who you are there are other ways of demonstrating that and you can still find love you know that happens it will happen again that's awesome the reason I have such a problem with this movie is because of what it means for the children that saw it okay when I see a movie intended for children I look at it from like who can they take inspiration from who can be a role model from this movie I don't want people having Ariel as a role model, okay? She disobeyed her father. She betrayed her people to fall in love with a human who she was told time and time again is a danger. And by following no one's instructions but her own, she went on to empower her own villain by sacrificing her voice because beauty is the only thing that matters in order to eventually fall in love and live happily ever after. That's probably the worst part, is Ariel does all of this stupid shit and it ends okay anyway. No. Okay? This, that would never happen. If a character actually, like, in the actual Little Mermaid story, she fails and dies horribly. That's what literally happens. This movie got Disney-fied. Okay, what message do the, does this movie send to the little girls who saw it when it first came out. It sends the message, doesn't matter what you say, it's what you look like that matters, and no matter what fucking stupid shit you pull off, it'll all work out okay. And you'll eventually go on to marry a prince and live happily ever after, as all Disney movies go. I'm not sliding it for the happily ever after, okay? That's fine, whatever. But all the shit that came before it for Ariel to get her happily ever after is a horrible lesson to be teaching kids. Thank you very much for watching this week's episode of Mario Corey's Movie Moment where I ripped Ariel to shreds, and I will see you all next week for another episode. Have a good one, guys.